Hello, everyone, and welcome to our December 2023 edition of My Home Kitchen. I'm Amber Beebe in the background on, on the recording and chat. And Jen, we will be joining here in a moment, is in the kitchen. Jen Hosier, we are the bariatric dietitians at St. Luke's. We'll be leading you through some recipes today that are focused on this holiday season. We thought it'd be appropriate just a couple of weeks from Christmas holiday, family gatherings, etc., to equip you with ways to enjoy this holiday that is typically filled with lots of sugars and lots of carbs. Before I jump over to Jen in the kitchen, please keep in mind that you need to be signed up for every cooking class to receive the email invite if you want to attend the live class. And always check your my chart for classes that you're signed up for. And if you're watching the recording, version and you'd like to receive copies of the recipes, please send your request to bariatric support at slhs.org, the email that's shown on the screen. And let's switch it over to Jen. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. You got it. Hello, everyone. How's it going, you guys? Happy December. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank you for joining us. So glad you could make it. We are going to go through some fun and really tasty recipes, right? The holidays can be a little bit challenging. A lot of times special occasions can because there's often a lot of foods that are there that aren't very helpful in, in keeping us on track when it comes to our health, our weight loss, whatever it might be. So we're always looking for opportunities to find recipes and ideas that help us really enjoy the food, but feel like we're still doing something good for our bodies, uh, or at least not setting us back, right? So we've got several recipes that we're going to go ahead and show for you today. Don't forget that you do have those recipes attached to that email that you received to be into the class today. So what we're going to start with is dessert, because why not, right? So what we're gonna do is we are gonna make some snowball cookies. I'm sure that you've seen these around before. They look like little snowballs or wedding cookies is another name for them. So we thought we would go ahead and put together our own version of a snowball cookie. Of course, keeping it much lower in sugar, but still getting that same look and that great taste. So what we're gonna do first is we are gonna take our powdered sweetener, our powdered erythritol here, and we're going to go ahead and add in our butter, just softened a little bit, just to kind of help it all come together. So I'm going to scoop that in here. I micro raved it just a little bit because it's chilly in here. The butter doesn't soften a lot by its own. And so what we're going to do is head on over here to my mixer. And we're going to whip this up here really good. Um, you know, for those of you who do any baking, you know, this is a really, really helpful piece or step. If you haven't, this is a really helpful piece or step, right? So when you're trying to cream the butter in with the sugar, you're looking to get a really nice kind of almost white whipped kind of a look. It adds a lot of loftiness to your baked product when you're done. It really kind of helps get this like creamy lightness to it. So once you get it going nice and slowly to get all of that powdered sugar mixed in so you don't get it poofing up in your face, then you want to go ahead and turn it up to your higher level and really give that a, a good whip. And so I'm starting to get a much lighter color to my butter. We're getting everything really, really well incorporated. You know, sometimes just taking that extra minute or two in these steps makes such a huge difference in the end product that it really, really is worth it. So I think we've got a pretty good whipped or creamed butter here with our sugar. I'm going to go ahead and spin that off, right? Spin it all back into the bowl. And then we're going to move back over here and we're going to start adding in the rest of our ingredients. So we had our half a cup of butter. If you have another kind of fat you prefer, you can use ghee, you can use coconut oil. Some people do better with those options or prefer them and that's fine. Um, and then we've got two thirds a cup of that powdered erythritol. We use the Swerve brand, but you can find different brands out there. Really up to you and what you find. And now we're going to go ahead and add in the rest of these ingredients. So we have our one and a third cup of our almond flour. And I went ahead and tossed our little pinch of salt into that. So that's all going in at the same time. And then we've got our uh, vanilla extract. We've got a teaspoon of that. 
it's colorless, so it kind of trips us out because it looks like there's nothing in the bowl. Well, there we go. We've got at that in there, and then we've got our pecans. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this together first, just to get it you know, fairly well incorporated with the almond flour. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stir in the pecan. So it's just good to, to get this all stirred up together first and get it really, really mashed up, right? We really wanna get all of this kind of coming together a little bit more. So I don't know how well you're able to see that, but we've got it coming together there pretty well. And then we wanna put in these nuts because this is a pretty integral part of these snowball cookies. So we wanna make sure that we have our chopped nuts in there. Um, if you're allergic to nuts like my husband, my condolences, sad. But if you enjoy nuts, you like them, they're a part of your life. They're a great snack. They're a great way to kind of feel like you're enjoying something special because you do get some good nutrients in these pecans, walnuts, almonds, whatever it is that you're using. Uh, and then of course they taste amazing as well. So this is coming together pretty well. If yours was still pretty dry and you really couldn't get it to come together, then you'd wanna add just a little bit of that milk or that water, just add a little bit more moisture to it. But I got a pretty good little dough ball in here that I'll show you. Right there, there we go. Easy peasy. So you got a couple options here. You can take a couple spoons, get those together, roll up the little balls. We got the cookie scoop. If you don't have one of these, seriously, you should definitely get one. They make life so much easier. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm telling you, within just a minute or so, we're gonna have a tray full of cookies ready to go. And I'm gonna get about a dozen on here. You do wanna give them a little bit of space in between. Um, you know, you don't need a ton of space because we don't have to worry about them spreading. Why? Because we're gonna stick them in the freezer for a few minutes just to get them really good and hard because that's gonna keep them from spreading once we get them into the oven. So we want them nice and firm and then we're gonna pop them into that hot oven and then they're going to start cooking right away and really solidify in their shape a whole lot better. So we've got a dozen with this cookie scoop. I've got a little bit left here and we'll just go ahead and finish that up after class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand these off to Shirley, AKA Vanna over off to the side and she's gonna stick them in the freezer for me so that they can chill. And then we'll go ahead and pop them in the oven. They go for about 15 minutes or so. You wanna get a little bit of that light browning on the bottom of them. And then once they have sat and cooled for a few minutes, she's gonna roll them in a little bit more of that powdered sweetener to get that snowball kind of a look. And of course you will see those come out a little bit later. So set these things off to the side here. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move on to our next recipe. And this is gonna be the snack option. Again, we've got some nuts. There's a lot of health benefit there. We're actually gonna add some extra spices and herbs. That's gonna add a ton of flavor. I think you're really gonna like these. And of course, anytime we add herbs or spices, we add a little bit of extra health benefit to it. So we have some rosemary pecans. And these are gonna be great. We've got our bowl of pecans here. We've got some chopped fresh rosemary. Got a little bit of butter as well and our different herbs and spices. I'm just gonna set that right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just warming our pan. Let me see if I can get the right pan, there we go. And we're just gonna melt our butter in here. And that's only gonna take you know just a few seconds here. And what we wanna do just to really kind of help with the flavor is in a sense, we're gonna, we're gonna actually cook our flavors a little bit before we actually, I'm having trouble getting my last bit of butter. Waste not, want not. That's what I always say. So I wanna get all the butter. There we go. So we wanna cook our, our herbs and spices just a little bit, not a ton, but we're gonna do that because that's really gonna help bring out the flavors. We're gonna warm them. We're gonna mix them into that butter. The fat is really gonna carry the flavor for us quite a bit. So we've got our, our butter warming there, it's melting. That's gonna be ready here really, really quickly. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add, we've got some thyme and parsley in here, a quarter teaspoon of each of those. We've got a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper 
If you don't like spice, you could leave that out, but honestly, these really weren't spicy. Um, it just adds a little bit of extra flavor, barely a kick, I would say at all. And then of course, we got a little bit of salt and pepper in here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss that in and get that stirred up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add in my rosemary. because we wanna get that all stirred up in here as well. Yes, that looks so good. And these smell delightful. So when we did these in the practice run, I gave them to a friend of mine. Her family loved them and she immediately asked me for the recipe, which made me feel really good about myself. But um, really, if you like herbed nuts, you'll really like these a lot. And they're super easy, right? We just have the, the herbs in the pan here with the butter. And we're gonna go ahead and toss in our pecans. We're not really cooking these in the pan. So um, once you've got everything warmed up and stirred up together, you don't need to keep the heat on because we're gonna have the oven to do the actual toasting for us. We just needed to get everything melted and stirred together so that we can get all of the nuts covered really, really well. Wow, that's already smelling really, really good, isn't it? I can smell the rosemary a lot. It's fantastic. And it's really such a beautiful holiday herb, right? You can buy those little uh, rosemary trees that kind of look like little mini Christmas trees. Those are really fun. And of course, they smell amazing. So. I think we got everything all incorporated here pretty well. I'm going to slide my lined sheet. By the way, you don't have to line it, but I'm telling you, makes your life easier. So if you can get yourself some parchment paper or if you have some of the reusable ones, I have several of those now because once I realized the magic of those and how much easier they make my life and being a working mom, you just need that help, right? Just need those little things. Um, so I'm going to spread these out because I want them to cook pretty evenly. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop these into a 350 degree oven. And we're gonna set them in there for about five minutes. I'm gonna take them out, shake them up, stir them up a little bit, shake and not stirred. <laughs> and, then, um, and then we'll put them back in for about another five minutes. So we'll go ahead and get these into the oven right here. I'm gonna set my timer for five. I'm gonna set the timer behind me. There we go. Go, five minute timer. And now that we've got that going in the oven, we are gonna take a short break. I'm gonna let Amber talk to you about a few things and then we'll come back and we'll move on to the next. All right, you guys, see you in a minute. All right, everyone, we'll have a quick break. Time for a break. There's the graphic that we need to have up there. Make sure I have all the mics off. Oops, I think I turned the camera off. Anyway, I can't see today, I apologize. Okay, make sure, like I said in the beginning, make sure you're signed up for every cooking class so that you get the email invite to check your my chart. That's how you get the recipes too. And then you also can see about future classes. Our next virtual cooking class is January 19th. That's a Friday from 11 to 12. And I think the topic, actually I don't know what the topic is. I should know. We're doing some, for New Year's resolutions, we're doing some food prep, I believe, and some healthy start to the January to the new year. Our next healthy living series is building healthy habits, where to start. And that starts January 2nd from, um, those are every Tuesday. Normally they're a half an hour class, but this month for our healthy habit class, they take a little longer. So it's every Tuesday from 11 to 12. And that runs for four weeks. Those will be, any changes that are made will be reflected under appointments in your MyChart account. So please be sure to check there. And then if you're watching the recorded version of this and you want copies of recipes, again, just please send us an email for that. Okay, I put up a little, these are some of the, the information on the classes that I just said and the cute little picture of the snowball cookies that are going to be coming up soon. Okay, I think we're headed back to soon. I don't know. Are we ready? We're ready. Okay. Hey, we just 
days. Am I not on? Oh, okay, let me start over. Welcome back. <laughs> now we're good. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next recipe, which is some crab beignets. So if you were looking at the recipes and you wondered how to pronounce that, it is beignet, it is France, all Francais. And if you have been or ever been down to New Orleans, or actually the proper way to say it if you're from there is Nolens, you would be probably familiar with a beignet, which is traditionally really a fried dough. And then they sprinkle some powdered sugar on top and they are delightful. Um, but we're not gonna do that version. We're gonna mix it up a little bit. We're actually gonna make some crab beignets instead. So they're gonna be special. They're gonna be very flavorful. They're gonna be kind of fancy. You could just call them mini crab patties or crabby patties if you want to, if you're a SpongeBob SquarePants fan. But I think beignet sounds so much more fancy. And so that's what we are going with. And so what I have here, I'll go ahead and talk through this for you, is the actual batter for the beignets. And of course, we've got our imitation crab. If you have real crab and you want to use that, good on you. Go ahead and do it. That's fantastic. But we went with the imitation crab and I chopped that up to be fairly small. And so we had that ready here. And then we also have two eggs, we have about a half a cup of a little bit of mayonnaise to kind of help hold that together. And we have two cups of our pork rind of breadcrumbs right here that we use so often, but that's our, that's our panko substitute that we use quite a bit. So we've got all of that in here. And then we have some of our added flavor, which is some of the coarse grain mustard. We've got a couple of tablespoons of that two teaspoons of some lemon juice, and then we have a quarter cup of the scallions, a quarter cup of the red onions, adds a lot of flavor. And then of course, some salt and pepper and just a little pinch of cayenne, nothing too crazy there, but just that little bit. I mean, if you kind of, if you ever are down there in that area, the Creole, the kind of spicy sort of food is pretty common there. And so that's kind of a hail to some of that Creole type of cooking right there. So mix this all together, just incorporated it really nicely. And then we put it in the fridge for a good hour. And that really helps this to solidify up for us. Oh, there's my timer for the nuts. We better shake those up a little bit, huh? I'm going to shake them up. I'm just going to give them a shake. Oh, maybe not that much of a shake. I'm shaking it all off the tray a little bit. Don't grab it with your hand, Jen. Almost did. So I'm just going to stir these up a little bit. There we go. I got my sheet off the tray a little bit. Okay, so just kind of stirring them up a little bit, just agitating them a teensy weensy a bit. Nothing too crazy. All right, good. And then I'm gonna stick these back in for another five and then they're done. Bada bing, bada boom. That's the kind of recipes we write, right? Nice and quick, nice and easy, all done. And then when we're actually done with them, we just you know let them cool and then they're good to go. So that's pretty easy with those. So anyway, we want this to be firm when we go ahead and we put it on the tray. Now you can pan fry these, but I gotta tell you, that is a little messy, right? Cause you do need enough oil in the pan to kind of get a little bit of a fry going. And so it's kind of spattering everywhere. These are also really quite rich as they are. And we found that baking them worked a lot better. It was quicker. You can do a whole sheet of them at one time. There's a lot less mess. And then we're not actually soaking more oil into these. Um, like I said, with the crab, imitation crab, so crab, uh, the pork rinds, the mayonnaise, it does make a really rich little beignet. So probably only a couple of these and you're going to be pretty good. This is not really, um, this is not going to be your big protein source for the meal or the day because of the richness of these. So just wanna give you a heads up on that, but they are really, really good. They're very, very flavorful. Uh, and you're gonna look awesome if you bring these to the party. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my cookie scoop again, right? Got my handy dandy little cookie scoop here. And I'm just gonna scoop these onto the tray. Now they're nice and firm, so they're gonna hold their shape really, really well. And so I'm just gonna make sure I get you know, just a decent size little ball here or beignet that we're going to call them. Um, any takers, anyone been down to New Orleans? I've been there once, but it's been a really long time. So it's probably changed since I've been there. But I do recall, so this is going to sound weird, but I went in high school 
and it was with a youth group from church, but we were going down to, to a youth group conference. So, you know, it was all chaperoned and planned out and everything like that for us. But my youth group leader did say, when we go into the French Quarter, look neither to the left or to the right. And that was some of the best advice he gave on that trip because you just want to look straight down the street. But beautiful, it really is beautiful, other than some of those kind of things. Um, it's a really beautiful city. There's a lot of beautiful architecture. The food is fantastic. The music is wonderful. There's a lot of history down there. It's a really lovely place. You guys laughing at my story? I know. And I did, I looked to the left once and I was like, oh, I cannot look to the left or the right in this place. This is strange. So I digress. That's my story for the day. Um, were there any takers? Is there anyone who's been there? Who's been there? Ma oh, Maggie. Yeah. So you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but it's a really fun place. Really beautiful. Okay. I digress again. So we've got our little crab beignets here on our tray, just like that. If you can see them sort of. There we go. Got the white sheet. So it's a little bit hard to see, but yeah, there we go. Right. So those are going to hold together pretty well. But just to help out a little bit, and because we have our, our nuts in the oven right now, we're going to go ahead and stick this in the, the refrigerator or the freezer just to keep them nice and cold. Normally, if I was just doing these, I would probably do two sheets of them at the same time. Um, I'd stick it all in the oven because the batter is really cold already and it would be fine. But because we're sharing the oven with other recipes today, we're going to go ahead and stick these into the fridge or the freezer, keep them really nice and chilled, keep their form really nice. And that way they're going to hold together in that ball kind of shape for us. Um, and then we'll be good to go. And then as soon as our nuts come out, which is gonna happen in just about another minute, then we'll be able to stick our cookies in and then we'll move on to the beignets. But we've got a little bit extra that needs to be put together with our beignets. So again, we've got another little French sauce that we're gonna put together. Sounds really fancy, but it is called a remoulade. So that is also French for, I forget, sauce. Um, but again, it's got a little bit of that Creole, really, really flavorful. It's not spicy, but it's got a, a lot of punch and a lot of flavor. And this is something that really is better to put together and let it sit for at least a good half an hour. So all the flavors can really come together for you nicely, but it really is quite easy, very rich. You do not need a lot of this. So a little goes a long way. In fact, I think you could use this um, with your crab beignets. I think you could use this with chicken fingers. I think you could use this as a dip for vegetables. There could be a lot of applications here for this, um, but we're going to go ahead and put this together. So what I have here is a cup of mayonnaise, right? So again, very rich. There goes my nuts. They're all done. We're going to go ahead and pull those out. I'm going to set those right here. We're going to let them cool for a little bit, and then surely we'll doll them up and make them look beautiful for us. So I have my cup of mayonnaise here. I already got it in my little mixing bowl. We are going to add a tablespoon of lemon and a half a teaspoon of some Worcestershire sauce. Say that five times, huh? All right, so we've got that in here. We've also got about a quarter cup of some chopped scallions or green onions. That's what we have today is green onions because that's what Walmart had. So that's what we did. So either way is fine, really. You, you get a good flavor. Um, with these either way. So you are okay with that. We've, we've also got two tablespoons. What's that? Oh, remoulade is a seafood dressing is what, uh, thank you, Amber, is what Amber is telling me. I looked it up and then I forgot. I should have refreshed my memory. Um, so that would make sense if we're putting it with our crab beignets, right? We've got our two tablespoons here of that coarse ground mustard. It's the same mustard that we used in the actual beignet recipe. And a little bit of horseradish, just a tablespoon of some horseradish sauce, not to be confused with straight up horseradish. So we're gonna put that all together right here in our little mixing bowl. And we're just gonna stir it up. And that's it, all right? Easy peasy. I don't know about you guys, 
Maybe some of you like to be fancy. On occasion, I think that's fun to try and be kind of fancy and make it complicated and intricate and, uh, you know, really enjoy the process of that. But I got to be honest with you guys, working mom, I'm a, I'm a human kid mom, I'm a dog mom. I don't got time. I'm just trying to get her done. So this kind of stuff for me is really helpful because I get a lot of flavor and it's really quick and it's really easy. So I don't have to worry about making it challenging or taking a long time. So bada bing, bada boom, remoulade. I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the side as well. We'll chill it for a little while until we're ready to actually use it. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll take a little bit of a break here and then we'll move on to our next recipes for the day. Okay, everyone. I know that I... <laughs> I'm a little clunky today. I apologize. All right. So for this break, I would love for let me put up that cute picture of the cookies again. I would love in the chat for everyone while we're waiting for Jen to get set up for the I think the final recipe. I don't know actually where we're at. I, I should be paying attention to that. Um, I'd love for everyone to share a tradition, one of your favorite traditions for the Christmas holiday, or how if you don't celebrate Christmas, a different holiday tradition that you is your favorite that you share with your family and friends. This, I'll start. Uh, every Christmas Eve, we watch the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation after dinner. Charlie Brown's Christmas, now that we have kids. Aw. <laughs> Christmas Eve candlelight church service. Oh, that sounds awesome. Christmas lights. That's what Maggie's family does. I love that. That's a great idea. Christmas Eve candlelight church service. I love that. And Secret Santa with coworkers. Those are awesome. Any more Christmas traditions? Okay, Christmas Eve, we open one gift. It's new pajamas that we watch a Christmas movie and read the night before Christmas. Oh, that's awesome. I, we used to open one gift when I was growing up. My grandpa always was so excited to have us open that one gift. <laughs> I don't know who was more excited, me or, or me and my cousins or my grandpa. Any other fun traditions? I think when I was, when my kids were little, I would have them open a gift and usually it was like a book or something, you know, it was, it was awesome, a gift. It wasn't a bad gift, but it wasn't like the exciting gift for the morning. Secret Santa for a family in need. That's awesome. Yeah. I was down at the Christmas tree lighting in Nampa this year, man, that was fun, but it was freezing and I don't get cold <laughs> and it was cold. And that's what they had a bunch of those Salvation Army things that you can take and, gra and grab a gift for a, a child in the Nampa area. That was awesome. Homemade apple cider and a start a fire. Ooh, I like that. Oh, this one from Kim. Okay, this is good. Then I think we're going back to the kitchen. Kim says, we set a trap for our kids each year to make them take longer and longer to get downstairs and for us to stay asleep longer. Kim, that is my favorite. I don't know how I got my kids to stay in bed till seven, but I literally made them. <laughs> okay, back to Jen here in the kitchen. Let me just get the camera back on. Yes, the mic. I promise they'll get the mic back on. There we go. Those are brilliant. I love the trap. That is great. Wish I would have thought that one myself. Although, I don't know. We kind of, I don't know if we threatened our kids or what, but they were pretty good about not getting up super early most of the time. 
So maybe we just got lucky or we just said, no Christmas if you wake us up. Um, but yeah, we did great with that. I think one of our, we have a few different traditions. Um, we usually like to watch a movie and typically it's Home Alone on Christmas Eve. That's kind of one of our traditionals, but A Christmas Story is another one. We have a few movies we like to watch through the Christmas season. And, um, you know, since the main character of A Christmas Story actually lives in our area, by the way, it's kind of fun and fitting that we can enjoy that movie. And yes, the Charlie Brown Christmas is a great one as well. So we really enjoy those. And I don't know, this sounds kind of weird, uh, but my husband and I really like Band of Brothers, which is not at all Christmassy, but we usually have enough time off around Christmas together that we can actually get through the whole series. So if you like World War II stuff, fantastic series. Um, yeah, not at all holiday vibe going on, but just a fantastic portrayal of what our soldiers did for us in World War II. So um, let's go ahead and move on. Those are some really fun traditions. So if there's any other great ones, um, I like the homemade apple cider and, and the fire, the fire pit. That's a really, I think that's a really heartwarming one as well. So let's go ahead and move on. We're really kind of moving through our recipes here pretty nicely. So we've got our pecans already set up to the side and cooling. We now have our cookies in the oven. They are baking. They're gonna be in there for about 15 minutes. We popped our beignets into the fridge just to keep them cool and firm really while we're waiting for our cookies to come out. So we're gonna go ahead and move on people. Let's go ahead and move on. And we're gonna do a vegetable, right? We like to have some special treats. And I think anytime that we can make, um, bring vegetables in and we can make vegetables really flavorful, I think it's a really great way to help us enjoy. Some of us love our vegetables, right? No big deal, no problem. And then some of us are still working on it, right? The, the vegetable flavor is still not quite hitting home and we just need to find some different and fun ways to enjoy our vegetables. And green beans are a pretty easy one, quite honestly. And that's what we have here. We have a green bean dish with some bacon and some mushrooms. So a lot of flavor, actually a lot of great nutrition here as well. Uh, and what we did is we got some fresh green beans. These were already trimmed, snipped for us. We we went ahead and pre-cooked them. So we just steamed them uh, on the stove top to get them tender, tender cooked. They're not totally dead. They're just a little tiny, still a bit crispy, kind of that nice bright green color. And so we've got those already ready to go. And if you're doing this recipe at home, you could do that, and then while that is happening, you could be cooking your bacon, which we already did ahead of time as well. So we've got three or four slices of chopped bacon pre-cooked, and then you're gonna wanna pull that bacon out and set it aside, obviously. So you can be steaming your green beans and cooking your bacon at the same time. But we also now need to cook our mushrooms. So that's what we're gonna do next, is we're gonna fire this sucker up and after cooking the bacon, I did drain off most of the grease from that. I wanna keep a little bit cause that still also adds some flavor in there, but we drained off the majority of that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in my about half a tablespoon or so of butter. We don't need a lot. There we go. And we're gonna let that melt down just a little bit. And then we've got about four ounces of some sliced mushrooms here. Um, you uh, you can buy the pre-sliced, which is what I like to do. Again, I'm sort of like a shortcut person when it comes to this stuff. Or, you know, if you don't get pre-sliced, if you get if you have one of those egg slicers that slices the eggs and the olives and the mushrooms and the strawberries, all the different things, really great little tool. I think in the kitchen, if you just need to slice some things really fast, some, some items that are a little bit softer. So we're gonna go ahead we're gonna pop our four ounces of sliced mushrooms into this guy. And I think Amber cut these down just a little bit more. They're huge slices. She was right. She's like, these are so huge. She's right, they are huge. So huge slices. So she trimmed some of these down a little bit more for us. So we're gonna give those a few minutes, start to release their juices, start to um, shrink down a little bit as they're doing that. Uh, so this shouldn't take too long. And we're going to let that go. And then we'll add all our other things in. We'll get it stirred all together there. And that'll come together pretty quickly. But while those mushrooms are cooking, we need to talk about our other recipe here, which I'll go ahead and pull over right here. 
And I know we talked about these quite a lot, but this is an infused water. This is one of the recipes that you have. And to keep it festive, we do have a cranberry mint combination here. And so when you, when you pour it out, it just looks like water, right? If you leave it sit there for quite a while, you might have a few little um, swirling remnants, but, but really it's just gonna look like water. It's pretty mild. The peppermint comes through pretty nicely. The cranberry gives a hint of sweetness. And of course it's red and green. So it's a really beautiful presentation. And with this, again, super easy. All you wanna do is put your mint and your cranberries or really whatever you're putting together into your container. And you're gonna to wanna to fill it with as much water as you're, you think you're gonna need and give it a good stir and really just kind of set it aside, stick it in the fridge, let it chill for a little bit, let it uh, just meld together with those flavors and really soak in with the water. So at least an hour before you're planning to use it, I think is a, is a good time frame. More if you have it, that's fine. And then when you're ready to serve it, you can add a little ice to chill it more or keep it chilled when you pull it out. Give it another good stir to really kind of get all of those coming together. And then you're good to go, right? This is super easy. You don't even have to make this for a party. You can just make it for yourself to warm your heart this holiday season. But it's just a really beautiful water. And then, of course, you can do a lot of other waters as well, right? We can do um, blackberry and sage. You can do a citrus with some lime, lemon, and orange. You can do the cucumber and the lemon. Uh, a lot of beautiful things there. I think we're switching them out. I think we got our cookies. Cookies are coming out. And oh, okay, four minutes. So we're gonna we're gonna double dip. We're double dipping. Yeah, we got to get her done, right, ladies? So, so that's really one of the fun things I think about these. And I don't I don't know um, that people I think utilize these quite as much as they could especially if you're not a huge water fan, but you're trying not to have all the sugary sweet flavors in your water and you're really trying to kind of train your palate for something a little bit cleaner and simpler. This can be kind of a handy segue. It's cheap, it's easy, and it's quick. And then of course for a party or just a gathering or just for Christmas or Christmas Eve, really quick, really easy, it makes you look like a rock star. And that's of course the kind of thing we like, right? And then you can uh, put together just some wine glasses, right? Nothing fancy. Um, I don't know if you're able to see it on this glass, but surely put a little decal with some snowflakes on it to make it look special. And then, of course, you can just take these off, right? So you can decorate for that one time. And then she strung some cranberries and some mint on. Yeah. And so you can have it sitting on top like this, and then you can just plunk it in there like that when you serve it, and off you go. And you have your really beautiful, really nice little glass of water. People can feel fancy and fresh with that. And again, you look like a rock star and you spent five minutes, right? That's my kind of drink right there. Okay, so I think our mushrooms, yeah, we're coming together here. It's looking good. Getting a little bit of browning going on. So I'm gonna turn that down. So basically we're gonna add everything into the pan. We're gonna stir it up, kind of warm these green beans up a little bit, let the flavors all come together. So we're gonna do that. And I should have got a bigger pan. Yeah, I had the bigger pan and and uh, now I don't. So we're gonna get this all stirred up. Oh, sorry, Shirley. Shirley's gonna take out my hip. That's all right, you're cool. So I'm gonna put my bacon back in. Don't forget the bacon makes such a huge difference. Got a little bit of lemon juice. What do we have here? Like a teaspoon or so, a tablespoon of lemon juice. This adds a lot of brightness. It's a really nice addition to have. So I think you're going to want to keep the lemon juice in there. But to help give it a little bit of balance, I'm going to use these to stir this guy up instead. You're going to want to put a little bit of salt in there too. Just a little bit, just to kind of help balance everything. A little acid can really brighten things up. Um, with with the uh, the lemon juice and everything. Sorry, Shirley, I threw a, a mushroom at her. Um, she's okay, she can handle it. <laughs> she's good. Um, so you're gonna wanna do a little bit of salt here. So I'm just gonna sprinkle on a little bit, not a ton, but we're just gonna have a little bit going on there. There we go. And you can always add more if you like more salt or if you're looking for opportunities to get more salt in because you're you're struggling to be low on your salt, you can do that too. So basically, we've got these all stirred together. And really, with this kind of situation, 
I'm just dropping green beans everywhere. <laughs> I'll try not to lose any more for us. It's just going. Yeah, it's cool. Use a bigger pan. Nick. Yeah, okay, y'all, use a bigger pan. Um, really, ideally, you would serve these right away, right? Or keep them warm and then be able to go ahead and send them right out. Um, but I'll hand these over to Shirley. There's a rogue green bean. And we're going to go ahead and take a break for a few minutes. We're going to, do we have our beignets in the oven? They're in there. Okay. So we're going to take a few minutes here. And then hopefully the beignets are done pretty soon. And then we'll start pulling things together for you. So we'll take a break and then we will be back shortly. All right, you guys. Radio silence. <laughs> okay, time for a break. Actually, I need to mute my mic for one second while we look at this cute little picture of the cookies again. I got to tell Jen something. One moment. Okay, I'm back. All right, last week during practice, wait, what's happening? I'm seeing a different slide than you guys are seeing. Uh, I don't understand. It's a nice slide though. Um, it is a nice slide, but that's not the slide that I'm trying to be on. So how do I do that? Okay. All right. It's funny that it's pulling up something else. Okay. So kind of a funny topic to talk about, but we're going to talk about constipation. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of random for a cooking class, but it keeps coming up in every appointment lately. So I just thought I'd post this picture of this product that I have discovered and have been using because I can't stand the stuff that you mix together and it gets all weird and gelatinous and chalky. And this is called Sun Fiber. It is a little bit expensive, but it's clear. So you put it in cold water in the morning. You could add crystal light to it. You could add anything that you like, an electrolyte drink to it, and it's clear. Uh, it does not dissolve in warm water very well, which is kind of bizarre. But it is crystal clear and what I wanted to talk about was other ways to, to build a healthy gut microbiome so that you can help prevent constipation. Because it's a real thing with bariatric patients. Because especially we're eating a lot less and you're eating a lot lower carbs. So you're not getting some of the whole grains and things in your diet. So what we recommend is sometimes a digestive enzyme actually can be really helpful to help start digestion when you're eating. So to take a digestive enzyme before you start to eat, it can help break up the foods and then digest them, which helps alleviate constipation. Also, we do recommend this uh, drinking a prebiotic or fiber supplement, or a lot of doctors are recommending uh, Benafiber or Benamucil or fiber gummies. So, and this is why I put the picture because I'm a huge fan of sun, sun fiber. <laughs> it's available on Amazon. And it's, it was developed by a university in, in Australia for people with gut issues. And so I like it for that. And also making sure that we're active. We need to get at least 30 minutes of activity each day. Walking works great for helping with moving bowels. And also, of course, what we always hammer in all of our classes is that 64 ounces of water a day really can help with constipation as well. If you're early, early, just got out of surgery, then 64 ounces might not be where you're at yet, but you'll get there. And then also starting to take a probiotic through a capsule or the chewable, or you can start eating sugar-free Greek yogurt, which can help build your healthy gut bacteria, which also helps with digestion. 
We also uh, encourage you to have in the increase your consumption of, of vegetables and adding a quarter of a cup of beans per day to can really increase the fiber in your diet. And lastly, the sixth tip is to take a magnesium supplement to start with 200 milligrams per day and increasing up to a thousand per day. And we, in our notes, when we see you guys, we recommend this product called Calm, C-A-L-M. I know I sound terribly stuffed up. <laughs> and I'm sorry that I sound funny, but uh, it's a powder product that you can add to liquids. And so it's great because you can tailor it. You can start with the 200 milligrams and you can increase it up. So it looks like after all that fun talk about constipation in a cooking class, um, we are going to go back to the kitchen. Everyone's like, thank goodness. Okay. Let me turn the mic on, turn the camera on. Wait, I did the opposite. I have the wrong mouse, sorry. There we go. So many mice, right? So many mice. Oh, now you turned the camera off. Oh. I, I was on, now I'm on. Oh, I'm sorry. Stop trying to cancel me, Amber. Um, getting canceled in the kitchen. Okay, you guys, so we are back. We really just kind of moved through those recipes really efficiently today, so much better than I thought we would. So um, everything to came together really, really quickly. We were just able to whip through those. So I know we're going to be done uh, a little bit earlier today, but let's just go ahead and take a look at everything that we made today. So we started out with cookies, right? We started out with dessert. So we have our cute little snowball cookies right there. Um, very, very bright. There we go. So um, these came out really nice. They flattened a tiny bit, but they still look good. And I tasted one, so they taste, I mean, they taste fine. Uh, they look amazing. They're like fun little snowballs. And you've got a lower sugar option here, right? So you've got some good nutrients in there with the nuts. And then, of course, you got a lower sugar little dessert. And people are going to like that. And then we had our snack. Oh, look at this. There we go. Our very lovely little bowl of our herbed nuts. These taste awesome. We got a cute little presentation with our bowl and with our little extra sprig of rosemary set to the side. So that's a really fun one. I think you'll really enjoy that one. That one's great for just a little snack. And of course we have our, our little appetizer here, our little beignets. So we've got all our little tiny balls, our little crab beignets here with our remoulade sauce. And you don't need very much of this. So just know that, you know, a couple of these a little bit of this sauce on top. You could even eat these without, but I think this adds a really nice punch of flavor. So you're going to want to have that again in a really cute, festive little plate here. And then we've got our green beans. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. These tasted really, really good as well. Green beans are easy. Most people like them. And then if you put mushrooms and bacon on it, you should have a lot of fans. So a really great vegetable, still a lot of good health components in here, especially with the green beans and with the mushrooms and uh, a little tiny bit of extra there with that bacon as well. So we've got that one fun, fun one going on. And then of course we have our, our little glass, right? We've got our nice little infused festive looking glass with the soaking cranberries and mint. So I think we got it, you guys. We just blasted through that y'all we saved you 10 minutes look at that i gift you for the season 10 minutes back in your life how was that but um hopefully you guys enjoyed today's class hopefully you really enjoyed these recipes i think you'll really find them very flavorful they're not very hard they just take a little bit of time in the kitchen um so i would highly encourage you to give them a try share them with some of your friends and family try them out for this season especially try out that water, make you look like a rock star. And do we have any other questions or comments from the peanut gallery off in the chat? You got anything else there? Otherwise, we'll wait for a minute. Otherwise, man, Merry Christmas, you guys. Go so check out this apron that Shirley made. Woo -woo, I'm Mrs. Claus right here, right? Super fun. Um, but Merry Christmas to you guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for sticking with us, letting us be a part of your lives. It's, um, it's a really special time of year for a lot of folks. And so we just really appreciate you taking the time to be with us.
We hope that we make your lives better. We love your personalities and the stories that you share with us. And so again, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Enjoy yourself a lovely Christmas season. Try out these recipes and please join us again in January for another cooking class and for the habits series if you can, right? January, we're all going to be working on some new habits, hopefully. So a good time to join us for that, that healthy living series. So we'll see you guys later. Merry Christmas. You're welcome. Enjoy those. And I think we're done. I think we're out. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. Merry Christmas.